Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto became part of Rhea's peerage and got harem. Part 2. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. Alright, let's go, said Naruto he then puts on his own helmet drives off, and the red haired teen didn't notice Akeno and Tsubaki watching from afar. Yuma smiles to herself well this was easy, but I must admit riding on this bike is fun. But I have a mission thought the young female teen. The two made it to the zoo at which Yuma smiled as she grabs his hand, and the two enter inside of the zoo, as the two walks by multiple cages she stops when she saw a flock of peacocks her eyes shine at the large birds. Naruto drugs his hands in his pockets and grins at her, I take it to you like them? Asked Naruto in a curious tone, but it was clear as day how much she liked the colorful birds. Yuma nods her head yeah, I do they're so pretty come on I want to see the other birds said Yuma dragging Naruto by the hand with a smile, not a fake one, but a true 100 watt smile, her eyes shined even brighter as she stares at the owls they're so lucky. Said Yuma Naruto turned towards her they are free birds allowed to go anywhere they want. Said Yuma. Yeah, I guess you're right Yuma, said Naruto. She then turned towards him with a pout Naruto raised an eyebrow at her call me, Yuma-chan. Said Yuma staring at the teen who's taller than her. Naruto rolled his eyes at the sweet girl how about we get some crepes instead. Advised Naruto he wasn't going to call her Yuuma-chan after all he hasn't called Sona-Sona-chan. Hey. Exclaimed Yuuma she then grabs hold of Naruto hands after the two bouts the crepes they began walking around staring at the tigers, turtles, wolves, hyenas, and rhinos, the two then stopped at a cage containing a family of anaconda, each of the snake stars at Naruto, with a curious gaze he then begins to hear voices not from the other person or within his mind, but from the snakes. His blue-colored eyes then changed into green serpent-like eyes, his crepe falls to the ground no sooner does Naruto's legs give out on him, causing him crashing to the ground. You have awakened young Gorgon. Said the voice Naruto didn't hear due to everything around him feeling fussy. The cap end. That voice who was that? Where am I? Wondered Naruto who surrounded by darkness the last thing he could remember was the voices of the snakes at the zoo, but that made no sense this wasn't Harry Potter, and people shouldn't be able to talk to animals. And it was that strange voice he keeps hearing once in his dream, and now at the zoo it said Gorgon. What the hell did it mean? Thought Naruto, but there was also something else that was bothering him, the strange feeling his scalp he struggles to open his eyes after a few seconds of attempting to open his eyes, once he finally has been able to open his eyes. His cerulean colored eyes open as wide, due to the fact he's laying on Yuma's lap with her large size freest in his view he turns his head to the side, avoiding to look at her freest wh what are you doing? stuttered Naruto as he can feel her hand run through his spiky locks. Yuma giggles at Naruto your hair is very smooth Naruto-kun. Smiled Yuma she didn't know, but she couldn't help herself stroking his hair, she then runs her hand over his whiskers, she then giggles at the young teen, purring what the hell. Why the heck am I giggling like a freaking schoolgirl? I am a fallen angel. Thought Yuma she then gains a fake smile you're just like a cute fox Naruto-kun. Beamed Yuma. Naruto blushes even harder he attempts to get up, but finds himself losing his balance Yuma quickly grabs hold of Naruto, the redeed turns to the beautiful ravenette how long was I out? Asked Naruto. About an hour, said Yuma his eyes went wide, she then smiles sweetly at him, how about I take you home? Asked Yuma Naruto nods his head the one good thing about this human is that he isn't a pervert, I really got lucky being assigned to him sorry Kalwerner, but there's no way in hell I'm going to pretend to be a Sei's boyfriend. Thought Yuma while she and Kalwerner were friends she did not want deal with Issei staring at her freest every five seconds. Sometime later the two finds themselves in front of the Yuzumaki residence after hearing a knock Kashina makes her way to the door as she opens it she sees her teenage son and a black haired teen, most mothers would be glad their son arrived home with a beautiful woman, but Kashina had another thought running through her head homewrecker. Roared Kashina she then grabs Naruto bringing him to her side what have you done to my son? You she devil. I won't let you ruin my Naruto's life Dadabeo exclaimed Kashina baring her fangs at Yuma. Yuma sweat drop at the overprotected mother that was a response she wasn't expecting she didn't do anything I collapse, and she took me home. Said Naruto Kashina quickly turns to her son staring into his blue eyes Kach and I'm fine she's a good person. Said Naruto Kashina turns towards Yuma glaring at the young female teen with eyes of a lioness. Yuma stares in shock as Naruto had called her a good person, it seems it has been forever anyone has ever called her good, when was the last time someone had called me good? Thought Yuma she honestly didn't know why she even cared about this boy complimenting her, it made no sense to her she had always been looking out for herself. Ashina glares at Yuma her crimson hair begins to move in an ominous manner, reflecting her angry emotion is what Naruto saying true. Growled Kishina in a tone that promises nothing but pain. 
Yes, I saw him collapse and helped him back here, says Yuma Kashina continues to glare at the ravenette female she didn't know how, but the human was quite intimidating, why the hell does I feel the need to plead my case? Thought Yuma she's a fallen angel who always faced constant death, but this woman was intimidating her. She then glances back at her son, then back at Yuma fine, you can take my son to his room, but if you try to defile my Neri-chan, I'll skin you alive and use the remains to make a new broom. Growled Kashina. Naruto blushes in embarrassment just take me to my room. Mutters Naruto he honestly wishes his mother wasn't as protective as she was Tsunade wasn't even this protective of him. Yuma nods her and helps the tattooed teen upstairs the black haired girl sighs as she feels Kashina's eyes glaring at her back sorry, she's a little protective of me. Mutters Naruto with a heavy sigh. A little. That's an understatement this woman is possessive of him. Thought Yuma she then smiles at him it's okay. Says Yuma as they enter his room she notices his room was neat, even the bookshelf was organized, she looks around, sees a photo of a young Naruto and his parents she saw his mother, but she didn't see or sense his father. She looks at Naruto how has his arm covering his face where's your dad I didn't see or hear him. Is he at work? Ask a curious Yuma she quickly notices how stiff he became, it would be impossible not to notice how fast his hand tightened. Accident, says Naruto it was clear he didn't want to talk about it, Yuma guessed she could have figured that on her own. He always talks about his mother, but never brings up his father, she guesses he wasn't so perfect after all. Her eyes then narrowed well that explains why his mother is like this, thought Yuma, even when this new information still makes her target better than that isle. Naruto smiles at her thank you, for today, Yuma I just you don't tell anyone this. It's a memory I can't forget. Says Naruto his eyes turn hollow, shocking her there the human goes complimenting her and of course he wasn't talking about her looks but her personality, or to be more precise the fake Yuma. Out of instinct, she pats his head her purple colored eyes stare in amazement at how soft his red hair is she lets out a sigh, what the hell am I doing? Mutters Yuma she looks down at Naruto, and noticing he's asleep a cold runs through her she looks back at the door, lets out an audible gulp Kashina stares at her with burning fury. Before she can even get a word Kashina grabs her by the face and lifts her up with one hand, shocking Yuma of the woman's monster strength, and stay out she devil. Yelled Kashina as she literally threw Yuma out of the house. As Naruto dreams, he finds him completely in total darkness, suddenly a black and gold serpent with crimson horns appears in front of him, he can clearly see his teeth, and they would be better suited for a dragon awe, we meet at last my partner. Grinned the serpent showing his dragonic fangs. Wh what are you? Asked Naruto his eyes widened he heard this voice before. Ah, finally recognized me, eh? Took you long enough. I am a sacred gear a gift from God, for now, you can call me world eater, W Ruto plus T for now says W Ruto plus T suddenly Naruto has pushed out the mindscape he wakes up in his room, well he is a logical person, whatever is going on with him, can't possibly he realistically explain. He releases a loud groan this had only given him a reason to search for the answers with feeling more frustrated, he buries himself under the covers the next day Naruto is at the table nearly finished with his breakfast, he doesn't even pay attention to the knocking on the door. When Kishina opened the door and glares at the smiling Yuma what do you want? demanded Kishina. Yuma stares at her with a sweat drop on the side of her save Kami, this woman is relentless. Thought Yuma she smiles at the mother I wanted to walk to school with him. Says Yuma. Kashina stares at her with a suspicious glare tsk, wait here. Said Kashina slamming the door on her Yuma stares at the door with a dumbstruck look Naruto, that girl is here. Exclaims Kashina. She doesn't even bother to remember my name. Though Yuma the door once again opens she smiles as she sees Naruto carry his motorcycle helmet morning Naruto-kun says Yuma hoping to get to ride his bike. Morning you Kaneko. Exclaimed Naruto in shock. Kaneko. Replied a confused Yuma she turns her head and sees the petite white net both fallen angel and devil stare at each other, with a dumbfounded look, what the fuck is she doing here? Thought Yuma she quickly shakes off the utter shock and replaces it with a fake smile, who are you, underclassman? Asked Yuma. Kaneko stares at her with a blank look, but inside she was freaking out Kaneko, I want to go to school with Naruto. Says Kaneko. I'm Yuma, I'm sorry, but Naruto-kun and I are going to school together, says Yuma both girls stare at each other. Naruto sighs at the bickering of the two girls well, we can't all ride my bike. Says Naruto both girls turn to him with a twinkle in their eyes. Ugh, me and my big mouth. Grumbled Naruto, instead of taking his bike they walk to school with each girl holding on each arm he sighs as he feels numerous angry eyes on him. First Kaneko-sama. And now this hot chick. Grumbled a boy. Another boy cries tears of anger damn pretty groans a teen. Uzumaki is so lucky. Says a teen. No fair. I want Kaneko to hold me like that. A boy. This is so bullshit. Yelled a teen. I'll die for you Kaneko-chan. Yells a fanboy. 
maybe this wasn't such a good idea, mutters Naruto, as he's everyone's main target of interest throughout the whole day and every period everyone stares at him by the third period, most of the students knew about Yuma and Kaneko clinging to him. With the final bell, he leaves the room and groans tiredly don't worry Naruto, this year last year. Ought Naruto the sooner he graduates the sooner he doesn't have to deal with the idiots of the school. Outside of the school, he sees a patient Yuma waiting for him Yuma. What are you doing here? Asked a surprise Naruto many of the open-minded boy stares at her breasts. She pouts at him I told you to call me Yuma-chan. And I wanted to walk home with you. Says Yuma Naruto didn't get to say anything as she leads him into town clinging to his arm, causing Naruto to blush from afar, a pouting Kaneko watches in dissatisfaction. Yuma smiles brightly at the red-haired teen let's go eat, says Yuma. But I was going to study, says Naruto he also purposely left the fact that he goes to this homeless spot to help people. Yuma pouts at him, but I wanna have fun. Exclaims Yuma he sighs in defeat she brightens at this snuggles against his arm with a calm look many of the adults look the two in awe and mistaking them for a couple. Yuma looks up at Naruto your mom doesn't like me. States Yuma. I think she's starting to warm up to I mean when she saw you at the door she didn't just slam the door on you so, that's something. It could have been worse, says Naruto. Really? Asked Yuma blinking at him in a cutesy manner. Naruto nods his head she could have used her bat. Says Naruto Yuma shivers at the thought of the female redeed the woman could easily lift her up with one hand and she didn't want to test the theory out. Naruto lets out a low chuckle yeah, she's pretty strong. Says Naruto. The Uma releases a low chuckle well, that's an understatement of the century that woman is probably a descendant of a devil. I wouldn't be surprised if that monster fraught a bear just for the shits and giggles. Thought Yuma she mentally lets out a sigh what the hell am I doing playing the good girl? I need to hurry up. Thought Yuma as the two enter the small restaurant that sells hot plates she smiles at Naruto this place is really good. Trust me Naruto-kun you like it. Says Yuma as they sat down she orders a beef hot place, and Naruto orders an order of salmon it took a while for them to get their order. Once they finally got their food she watches as he cooks his meat once it's cooked right he eats it, Yuma chuckles at the glint in his eyes he ha, told you. Giggled Yuma she then stops her giggling as she hears munching she turns her head and sees Kaneko munching on her second serving. How long have you been there? Asked Yuma. The short teenagers takes a bite of steak a few minutes, says Kaneko unknown to both human and fallen angel she had been tailing them since they left school, not even Riaz knows that she is here for some reason she didn't like how Yuma clung on to him, maybe it was because she knew who she was, of course. It could have been because he was the only one that actually treated her like a normal person she blushes at the thought of her time with Naruto. Yuma's eyebrow twitched in annoyance at the girl what the hell she's been here the whole time. How the fuck did I not notice? It's okay, just need to play it cool. Thought Yuma she continues to eat the food she then stops eating, as she feels Kaneko staring at her, what? Asked Yuma. I wanna sit next to Naruto, says Kaneko. But I'm sitting here, says Yuma. Don't care I want to sit there, states Kaneko. The two females glare at each if you look closer, you can see electricity in both their eyes, as they have a stare down Naruto turns to Yuma, sighs loudly, let Kaneko sit there, I don't see a problem with it. Says Naruto Yuma pouts at him and rises to her feet. As both Yuma and Kaneko glare at her, she holds up a peace sign which greatly angers her with Kaneko now sitting next to Naruto, she stares at him with an innocent look he smiles down at her, how was your day? Asked Naruto. Good, but math is evil, says Kaneko. Well, I can help you if you want. Asks Naruto Kaneko nods her head at a rapid pace, causing him to smile Yuma stares at Kaneko with an irritated look. Maybe the people from school aren't so bad. Thought Naruto after three more servings he was full of each of the students' bellies full, they pay for their own bill Naruto then decides to walk her home, and Kaneko decides to tag along, not trusting the busty woman. Even as they left the two continue to glare each other Naruto can't help but wonder when the two will stop glaring at each other. Incoming partner. Yells W Ruto plus T deciding to listen to his sacred gear he tackles both girls to the ground and narrowly dodging the spear that was thrown at them. What the hell was? Exclaimed a confused Naruto. That would be me, little human, says Donaseek Naruto looks up in the night sky and sees Donaseek flying the fallen angel chuckles at the teen he turns to Yuma, I see you took your time Rainer. No matter I'll kill this brat and the devil bitch. Grinned the fallen angel. He chucks the blue light spear at Naruto, but his left arm glows purple, revealing an armored scaled snakehead, the armored gauntlet is black and purple with four crimson colored horns protruding from the head, the eyes are colored a metallic maroon on the top of its head, is a small gold colored gem, the snake mouth opens up and swallows the light spear, shocking the supernatural people stare in shock. WHWH what the hell? Is this my arm? Exclaimed a confused Naruto if the fallen angel wasn't strange enough, then his arm transforming was just straight up confusing. 
the fallen angel charges at him with blinding speed and appears in front of him and backhanded slaps him which tosses him against a tree don't get ahead of yourself. You're still just a pathetic human. Lotes don't seek he creates another light spear, but before he could he throw the weapon he's punched in the gut by Kaneko Rainer throws a light spear at his shoulder, which had tossed him through a tree. While he's distracted extend your arm out and say Hydra Flash Hadassah, says the serpent. Right, Hydra Flash, Hadassah. Exclaims Naruto the snake head opens up and fires a purple shot that hits Donaseek in the chest. The fallen angel grabs his chest in pain damn it that sacred gear can absorb energy and release it back even stronger. I need to kill him now. Thought Donaseek he knocks both girls to the side each girl runs at after him as he creates a huge spear. Rainer throws several light spears at him, but Donaseek doesn't even seem interested at the fact the spears had pierced him, he glares at Naruto with a bloodthirsty grin, Naruto's blue eyes then morphed into green snake-like eyes, suddenly Donaseek turns to stone before their very eyes. What the hell just happened? Why does Yuma have wings? What the fuck is going on? Yells Naruto he turns to the girls wanting some answers. Both girls sigh knowing they can't lie their way out of the situation, especially when Naruto had just awakened his sacred gear and turned Donaseek to stone. Kaneko lets out a defeated sigh, and her black leather wing sprouts from her back I'm a devil, and she's a fallen angel. Says Kaneko. Uh, right and thing. Asked Naruto pointing to his arm. That is a sacred gear which is known as God's artifacts or items with powerful abilities bestowed upon humans by God of the Bible, and you possess a long inus which are unique top tier sacred gears, each having multiple abilities compared to a normal sacred gear which only has one and has the power to slay gods. This class of sacred gears is also known as the tool that destroys God. There are 13 long inus in total. Says Rainer. Naruto scratches the back of his head in confusing so, um, these gear sacred are powerful items sealed in people's body by God. Replied Naruto both girls nod their heads Naruto's eyes turn to Rainer wait a minute he called you Rainer. Who are you? Questioned the red haired human. Rainer sighs loudly her whole body glows brightly, she then looks far more mature and wearing revealing leather clothes, even her face looked completely sexual, she then uses her wings to left her off a few feet from the ground, my real name is Rainer, and what the midget said is true, I'm a fallen angel just like Donaseek here. Says Rainer pointing down at the broken pieces of Donaseek. Kaneko looks down at herself with an annoyed look she then points at Rainer she was ordered to kill you. Says Kaneko leaving Naruto and Rainer she was more shocked that the little girl would straight up snitch on her. Naruto turns to her is that true? Asked Naruto. Yes, but that was before I can't possibly return back they'll kill me, says Rainer. Okay, bye, says Kaneko coldly. Rainer grits her teeth in annoyance fuck off a stupid cat. Yelled Rainer. Dirty turkey. Insulted Kaneko narrowing her eyes at Rainer. Dwarf. Yelled Rainer. Kaneko's eyebrow which is cow udders. Growled Kaneko. Rainer looks as if someone had just kicked her dog, she then grins mischievously, she then begins to play with her large breast, causing Naruto's face to turn a deep scarlet Kaneko pouts an annoyance jealous brat. Don't worry I'm sure someday you'll grow out of your training bra. Don't worry I'll keep Naruto-kun warm. Says Rainer she turns and winks at Naruto, this had only turned him into a stuttering mess. Brahma boobs. Says an angry Kaneko. Rainer then pokes Kaneko in the face, causing her to step back now, listen here middle schooler ugh, just stop. Exclaims Naruto causing the two girls to stop their insult match, he then rubs his eyes, I just almost got killed tonight, and I'm going home. Says Naruto. Rainer flies above him I'll walk home with you. Says Rainer. Kaneko appears by his side and grabs hold of his hand no, I will flying turkey. Insulted Kaneko. As the two glare at each other Naruto lets out a sigh he had no idea what he got himself involved with, but it would be nothing like his current life. Two days have passed since the Donacy thing he had seemed like everything had started to go back to normal, but Naruto would often practice with W. Rito plus T. Dot. He also hadn't seen Rainer or Kaneko which shocked him, but just like every other morning, Naruto is eating his mom's homemade waffles and French toast the duo, then hears the doorbell Kishina opens to the door and stares at the white net with a curious look, and are you? Asked Kishina she had to admit it this girl is pretty cute. I'm Kaneko Tauju Naruto Senpai's underclassman, says Kaneko. Kashina narrows her eyes at Kaneko come in. Said Kashina in a wary tone Kaneko just nods her head and follows the mother. She followed Kashina to the kitchen where Naruto is eating she smiles at him Naruto do you know this girl? Asked Kashina. Naruto turns to his mother and stares in shock why yeah she's my underclassman. Says Naruto. Kashina hums to herself she then places her hand on Kaneko's head fine, I'll allow this friendship, but if you try to play patty cake with my son, I'll skin your ass alive and pour pounds of salt on you. Threatened Kashina Kaneko shivers in fear. Later that evening Naruto had just finished with his last patient with everyone leaving heading to a new location to sleep. 
Naruto had just finished putting away the medicine with a loud sound of a bang, Naruto grabs his shoulder in pain, as he was just shot Kuki Kuku, take that you stupid brat. Grin Freedy then shots Naruto several times, causing the boy to scream in pain. Freed then appears in front of him and gives him a left punch with Naruto laying on the ground, Freed stomps on his face, ahaha, now die, filthy devil, lover. Yells Freed stabbing Naruto in the gut, causing him to throw up blood I can't believe Donaseek let this talentless brat kill him. Laugh the insane man. As the man vanished in the night Naruto begins to cry I don't want to die. It'll just make mom sad, there's still so much I want to do. Cried Naruto he then begins to coughing blood his vision then becomes hazy suddenly a red magic circle appears, but his eyes were already closed, he then hears someone calling out his name that sounds like Kaneko. Mumbled Kaneko. Kaneko rushes over to Naruto cradling his head on her lap Ria's but you we were too late. Cried a saddened Kaneko. Ria stares at Kaneko in shock she wasn't expecting to get such a reaction from Kaneko, she knew her petite friend, she knew what she had to do. From what Kaneko had told her has a powerful sacred gear, so she knew one pawn wouldn't work, so she used all her pawn pieces, turning him into a devil. Time skip. The next morning Naruto groans in pain his eyes then open wide as he realizes he's awake in his bed and not dead, he also quickly realized that someone else in his bed he turns and stares into the eyes of a nude Rias who has a sly grin he then grabs her by the shoulders she raises an eyebrow at him, you gotta get the hell out girl. Says Naruto. She stares at him and shock my name is Ria's Gremory, and I'm part of I don't car you gotta leave now. Says Naruto getting up from the bed and puts some pants. He then shoves her clothes Ria's lap she pouts at her fellow Ritid well that says Ria's. Is that a girl I hear? Growled Kishina, as she steps closer and closer to the door, begins to freak out he knew if his mother found this girl in his room, she would kill them both sure this Ritid girl, but that wouldn't stop his mother no, this will only encourage to create new ways for Kishina to kill this Ria's girl. Seeing no other real option he shoves her out the window she stares shock, not believing she has just pushed out the window Kaneko had told her about his mom, she thought Kaneko was just joking about how protective she is of Naruto. Kishina comes barging in his room wielding a bat where is she? Asked Kishina looking around his room. He watches as she looks under the bed she looks at the ceiling ah, uh, who? Lied Naruto. I heard a girl, says Kishina she looking through his closet she narrows her eyes and looks out of the window, but she didn't see anyone. I know I heard someone exclaims Kishina. Mom, no one here. Can you please put the bat down? Pleads Naruto. She lets out a sigh she then hugs Naruto fine, get ready for school. Says Kishina she then lets out a defeated sigh I could have sworn I heard a girl's voice. But don't you worry Neri-chan I'll protect you from those horning teenage harlots. I won't allow any of those girls ruin my son's future. Exclaimed Kishina. Sometime during lunch, Naruto buries his head at his desk he soon came to realize, ever since he and Kaneko his life had been becoming a clusterfuck, just who the hell was that girl. Thought Naruto maybe if he just closed his eyes, but that doesn't seem to be working as he hears the other students begin whispering among themselves, he then released a sigh as he feels someone, someone tapping his shoulder he turns and sees Ria's Gremory standing before him crap. It's that weird girl. Thought Naruto. Ria smiles at him in a friendly manner can we talk? Asked Ria's Naruto just nods his head. As they exit the classroom Naruto turns to her with a bow I'm sorry pushing out the window miss. Apologize Naruto. It's okay, Kaneko-chan told me how aggressive your mom can be, says Ria's, she then smiles at him by the way my name is Ria's Gremory, says Ria's Naruto nods his head, but that doesn't mean he doesn't feel guilty about pushing her out of a window. He then turns to her with a confused expression so, um Ria's where are we going? Ask the tattoo teen he then glances at a few students and notices the males of school look at him with jealousy, he turns away from them and turns to his fellow Ritid, he notices the smile she's wearing seems to be forced, which confuses him greatly. The my club room of course. You do have some questions. Asked Ria's all Naruto could do was a nod his head. Later that day Naruto rubs eyes and drinks the coffee made by Akeno ever she had told him about the war and the system of the devil pieces Naruto looks as if his brain had been a short circuited I know this can be overwhelming says Ria's. Overwhelming isn't the word I would use. Thought Naruto sitting next is Kaneko who is stuffing her face, she then offers him a piece of cake which he gladly accepts the dessert he then glares at Ria's, how do no I can trust you? From what you said these other devils treat their um, peerage like slaves, how can I trust you won't do the same? Questioned Naruto. She can understand why he seems so on edge many of her friends had acted the same when she resurrected them into devils, I can assure you the Gremory clan treats their peerage as family. Says Ria's. Naruto still looks uncertain about joining this girl peerage and being involved in a war that lasted for many decades, he also didn't like the idea of being someone's slave. Kaneko turns to him and smiles Naruto smiles back at her, you said the fallen angels are after me, because what's sealed in me right? 
asked Naruto Riaz nods her head, while Lakeno and Kiba looked at Naruto with a curious gaze Riaz nods her head, then would they to go after my mom to get to me? asked Naruto with a serious look. Yes, I wouldn't put it pasted them to go after your mom. You may have killed Donasi, but without proper training, you stand no match, says Riaz. He would rather leave this room and pretend this meeting never happened, but he knew these fallen angels won't give up anytime soon, he also couldn't allow his mom to get involved in this. Ugh, fine but I won't join your club I'm busy with other things, says Naruto Ria smiles at this, he then rises to his feet and glares at her, but if you start treating me like a slave, I'll end you. Threatened Naruto. As he leaves the room Akeno snickers she then turns to her best friend, we've got an interesting little pawn. Joked Akeno with a blush. Just as Naruto gets ready to mount his bike he's tackled by Rainer Naruto-kun I miss you. Exclaimed Rainer she nuzzles against him. Naruto pats her on the back where you been? Asked Naruto. Looking for a new base. I couldn't go back to the old one, says Rainer. Her cap. The my club room of course. You do have some questions. Asked Ria's all Naruto could do was a nod his head. Later that day Naruto rubs eyes and drinks the coffee made by Akeno ever she had told him about the war and the system of the devil pieces Naruto looks as if his brain had been a short-circuited I know this can be overwhelming. Says Riaz. Overwhelming isn't the word I would use. Thought Naruto sitting next is Kaneko who is stuffing her face, she then offers him a piece of cake which he gladly accepts the dessert he then glares at Riaz, how do know I can trust you? From what you said these other devils treat their um, peerage like slaves, how can I trust you won't do the same? Questioned Naruto. She can understand why he seems so on edge many of her friends had acted the same when she resurrected them into devils, I can assure you the Gremory clan treats their peerage as family. Says Riaz. Naruto still looks uncertain about joining this girl peerage and being involved in a war that lasted for many decades, he also didn't like the idea of being someone's slave. Kaneko turns to him and smiles Naruto smiles back at her, you said the fallen angels are after me, because what sealed in me right? Ask Naruto Riaz nods her head, while Akeno and Kiba looked at Naruto with a curious gaze Riaz nods her head, then would they to go after my mom to get to me? Ask Naruto with a serious look. Yes, I wouldn't put it pasted them to go after your mom. You may have killed Donasi, but without proper training, you stand no match, says Riaz. He would rather leave this room and pretend this meeting never happened, but he knew these fallen angels won't give up anytime soon, he also couldn't allow his mom to get involved in this. Ugh, fine but I won't join your club I'm busy with other things, says Naruto Ria smiles at this, he then rises to his feet and glares at her, but if you start treating me like a slave, I'll end you. Threatened Naruto. As he leaves the room Akeno snickers she then turns to her best friend, we've got an interesting little pawn. Joked Akeno with a blush. Just as Naruto gets ready to mount his bike he's tackled by Rainer Naruto-kun I miss you. Exclaimed Rainer she nuzzles against him. Naruto pats her on the back where you been? Asked Naruto. Looking for a new base. I couldn't go back to the old one, says Rainer. The cap end. Naruto sweat drops at the busty fallen angel who's clinging to him well, she isn't wrong going back will be suicidal, thought Naruto with his newly devil status, has only encountered three fallen angels, and they don't seem to be the type two to sit and listen to reason, they seem to be the type attack first. From what Riaz had told him fallen angels had fallen because they committed some type of sin, it was obvious Rainer had committed some type of sin, but he wasn't about to ask her what sin she did, he had a feeling it was a subject you shouldn't bring up. Plus, whatever caused her fell was her own business, she also didn't seem too bad she did save him after all, so she couldn't be that bad. She then pulls away from him and smiles at him also, there's something I need to tell you, says Rainer, he quickly notices her eyes look sad and re-dared teen look concerned at the ravenette. He tilts his head in confusion um, okay what is it? Asked the confused pawn. He watches as she takes a deep I think it's better if I show you, says Rainer she then hops onto his bike. Naruto scratched his head in confusion, but can't you fly? Asked Naruto. She nods her head, but your bike is so cool. Exclaims Rainer plus this gives her chance to wrap her arms around the redeed hunk, and she didn't need to worry about that Nico trying to take his attention. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders getting on the bike he blushes a deep red that matches his own hair, as he can feel Rainer's large breast unknown to them, another redeed was watching from the widow she then pouts at the two, she then hears giggling she turns came sees Akeno giggling at her best friend. Fufu, is Ria's jealous the fallen angels that she close to our new pawn. You know I heard he kicked you of a widow future oh, I would like to see the look on your face, giggled Akeno with cheeks turning pink in color, will he punish me too, I wonder. Says Akeno Riaz shook her head at her best friend, although she can see why Kaneko and Rainer seemed to be attached to the re-dared Uzumaki he was kind, friendly, smart, and it's was also handsome too, and unlike most guys at school, he wasn't a pervert. 
She then glances at Akeno, and it won't be long before Sona gets Issel, says Ri as Akeno nods her head, she then gains a concerned look at her friend, worrying about the heiress at getting close to the that day. Pervert scumbag, says Kaneko in disgust causing both teens to laugh at the petite girl. Akeno, Kaneko it's time we begin training we've been holding off training for far too long, says Ross, both girls nod their heads in agreement. While Riaz was making plans to train her peerage Naruto and Raynor drove to an abandoned shrine, a shrine smart not as obviously as an abandoned church, but this could be a good place. Says Naruto he raised an eyebrow as he watches a young blonde girl exit out of the shrine, but just as she walks out of the shrine she trips over her two on two feet, causing Naruto sweat drop at her, he then looked away as her dress flies up. Naruto then turns to Raynor uh, Raynor who is this nun? Ask Naruto from what he can tell she didn't give off the same type of that Ria's a Rainer have off, so it was safe to assume she was human. Right, this is Asia Argento she belonged to church until she was kicked out for unknowingly healed a devil my superior posed as an angel and sent her here to steal her sacred gear, says Rainer she turns from Naruto and watches as Asia pick herself up, she then bows to Rainer. She smiles at Rainer in an innocent manner she then turns to look at Naruto in confusion hello sir, my name is Asia Argento. Who might you be? Ask a curious Asia who smiles in an innocent manner, but everything about this girl seemed innocent and pure, it probably was because she was a nun, fortunately she wasn't one of those nuns that abused their power, but she was far too young to be one of those type of people. Then again there doesn't seem to a single angry bone in this girl for some reason he can already tell this girl pro couldn't even lie to save her life. Naruto smiles warmly at the petite blonde nun he then bows to the young nun hello sister, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, but you can call me Naruto, says the Uzumaki make he then points his thumbs towards the beautiful black haired female I'm a friend of Rainer, says Naruto smiling at Rainer who blushes at him. Asia smiles warmly at him with her green eyes staring at him from wonder wow, Rainer sama has told me you're a very kind person. She says you help people too, I'm happy to finally meet you Uzumaki-san. Says Asia when she first met Rainer she told her the people at the abandoned church were bad people, she then took her to the shrine and said it was a safe place, she even told her much about Naruto how he helps people need. Naruto rubs the back of his head blushing in embarrassment, not used to praise he lets out a nervous chuckle um, thank you Asia, but you can just call me Naruto, says Naruto with a smile. Asia stares in shock wait are you sure that's alright? Isn't that too formal? Asked an unsure Asia. Naruto just waves off the girl nah, it's fine I don't mind, says Naruto with a smile. He then raised an eyebrow or she twiddle her fingers, she even seems unsure about herself um, can I make a request? Ask the nun she watches as he nods her head Asia's eyes turns to her feet, before she stares at his whiskered face, can we um can we um, be friends? Ask Asia in a nervous manner. Okay, wasn't expecting this, thought the male he then smiles at her, he then pats the girl on her head sure, I don't see anything wrong with us being friends, says Naruto. Her smile widened even her eyes begin to sparkle are really. You'll actually be my friend. Exclaims the innocent. He quickly raised an eyebrow at the girl didn't you have friends at the church you lived at? Asked a confused Naruto he was sure a sweet and nice girl like Asia had tons of friends. Asia smiles sadly at him actually no, I've never had a friend. Back at the church in Italy no one really talked to they were always wary of me because of my gift, you see God gave me the ability to heal, even though my life has been hard, I know it's just God trusting me after all he lead me to you and Rainer Sama, says a smiling Asia her smile vanished as she sees Naruto in pain. Are you okay? Asked a concerned Asia. Yeah, just a small headache, says Naruto as his head hurts from her saying God's name just like Ria's, had told him he would feel pain if he hears God's name note to self never use his name, thought Naruto Rainer looks at Naruto with concern full well, knowing about the devil's weakness, and she knew his head must feel like it's ready to split wide open. Rainer smiles at Asia and know you have two friends, says Rainer Asia then begins to cry, but these are tears are not she pats Asia on the head come on, Asia there's no need to cry. Says Rainer. But, I'm so happy. I've never thought I would I ever have not one but two friends. I've always dreamed of having friends and going on a picnic, cried a happy Asia. And I'll introduce you to someone so you can have more than two friends, says Rainer. Wait really? Asked an ecstatic Asia. Her name is Middled, she's around your age, lied Rainer Middled was actually around a few thousand years old, but she still has the appearance of a small child. Is she a fallen angel too? Asked Naruto Rainer nods her head well, I guess in could have guessed that that doesn't really sound like a name anyone would really have. She's still just a kid, she was manipulated into working with Kakabiel, says Rainer she then turns to Asia I'm sure you and her would make good friends, smiled Rainer suddenly they each had a growl both devil and fallen angel then to Asia, whose stomach growls again causing the two to laugh the blonde girl blushes. Naruto smiles at this how about we get something to eat, says Naruto. Rainer turns to Naruto what you have in mind burgers? Asked Rainer. 
He shook his head nope, something better Raymond, grinned Naruto. Raymond? Asked a confused Rainer. Raymond? What's that? Asked Asia leaving the girl confused. Wait. You don't know what's Raymond? Questioned Naruto she shook her head negatively he then grabs her hand, causing her to blush okay, this is now a matter of security now. Exclaimed Naruto he then drags her her to his bike he then gets on his bike come on, Asia hop on, says Naruto. But I've never been on one of those before, says Asia she then turns to Rainer, but what about Rainer Sama there isn't enough room, says a saddened Asia. It's fine I have my own way, says Rainer two black wings sprout from her back Asia looks amazed Asia then nervously gets onto the bike wrapping her small arms around him, she then lets out and rep as they drive off causing her to hold him tight. Rainer then pouts as she watches the two drive off she then gains a serious expression as she floats above higher in the sky, glaring at the abandoned church she knew she couldn't allow someone like Kakabiel to get his hands on Asia, plus she knew Kakabiel was just using them for his own gain it the only ones who were loyal to him were Freed and Kalwerner. She knew she had to warn her superior, since it was against the law too for them to harm a human with a sacred gear, and the fact that he has interest in Asia plus with having fallen angels here in Gremory and Sitter territory, could cause another war, and that's the last thing they needed, I guess I'll have to talk to Rias. Thought Rainer she then signs knowing this really can't wait, meaning she couldn't join Naruto and Asia which caused her to pour she then smiles, realizing this also means Kaneko isn't with him. While Rainer was flying over to the Devil's Clubhouse Naruto and Asia, we're enjoying Raymond at a local especially Asia, since she never had Raymond especially real Raymond, and not that instant Raymond you would find at a food market. The nun hums in enjoyment as she tastes the broth from her pork Raymond, she smiles brightly at Naruto who blushes in response, not used to such a cute girl smiling at him. While both Kaneko and Rainer were fighting for his attention, he's still used to having females around, especially ones that are as beautiful as Rainer, and as cute as Asia and Kaneko. He smiles at her I'm glad you like it Asia. It's actually my favorite food my Kachan would make it for me on special occasions, says Naruto. Kachan. Repeated the confused nun. He nods his head oh, that's right you're from Italy. Akachan means mom, says Naruto she then gains an understanding expression he honestly couldn't believe she didn't know what Raymond or Hamburger was Asia really lived a shelter life, thought Naruto he honestly couldn't imagine not knowing what Raymond and Hamburgers it only made him wonder what other things she was naive about. He definitely couldn't handle living at a church he'll go insane with how strict they are, and some of them have narrowed minds believing their religion is superior. Asia looks at him with confusion seeing him stop eating his Raymond Hey Asia, how would you like to do this again and try some other food? Ask Naruto plus she does seem lonely, and he wanted to make sure she wouldn't feel alone. I like that a lot, says Asia the two then begins to eat their food, even though she had just met Naruto, she could already tell he was kind she felt blessed that she met such a nice person, even though she is saddened that the church kicked her out, but at least she met Rainer and Naruto two kind people, and Rainer promised she'll have another friend too, and she couldn't be happier. I don't think I've ever been more happier I hope we can stay friends, thought Asia with a smile she was also hoping she can ride his bike too thank you Naruto. Says Asia. For what? Asked Naruto. For being my friend and treating me to this delicious meal, I'm truly to be blessed to have met someone like you. I would like to repay you please is there anything I can do? Asked the young girl. Naruto rubs the back of his head trying to think he then gains a grin on his fan face you said you can heal right? Asked the red haired teen the blonde nun nods her head causing Naruto to smile widened, making him look like a grinning fox, I think I have an idea, says Naruto Asia looks on in wonder. Back at the occult research club. Rias looks at Rainer with suspension with Akeno staring at Rainer with hidden anger of course, Rainer isn't surprised the two are wary of her, she did originally plan to kill Naruto, the best thing to do is not anger Rias, since she could be reduced to dust, thanks to Rias destruction magic, which literally destroys anything it touches, and she wasn't arrogant enough to think she can handle. Rie dared woman's destruction magic. Thank you for seeing me Riasama, says Rainer. It's no problem, but why did you want to meet with me? Asked Rias she didn't hide the fact she didn't trust the fallen angel. This caused a sign well at least they aren't throwing lightning and destruction spells, so that's at least good, thought Rainer she then mentally shakes her head, it would do no good if she was thinking negatively. As you and Sona Sitter the fallen angels had invaded your territory what you might not know is why, but I'm sure you know they wished to kill Naruto-kun, and that pervert is say. But what you might not know is they are after Asia Argento she was a nun of church before she was kicked out of the church, says Rainer she watches as Rhea's eyes narrowed at the mention of the fallen angel's goal to kill both Naruto and Issei, she honestly didn't care about the little pervert she heard that he was reincarnated by Sona, and she felt sorry for the sitter heiress dealing with a huge pervert like Issei is a mission on its own. Why was this Asia kicked out of the church, and why are they after her? Asked Rhea's. From what she told me she was banished because she healed a devil, but Asia is a very innocent girl if she can't she'll heal anyone, even if they are the enemy of the church. 
She also wields the sacred gear Twilight Healing has the ability to heal humans and angels, as well as other supernatural beings, such as devils and fallen angels. Says Rainer. To be able to heal devil and fallen angels that does seem amazing I take it they wish to use her Asia to make themselves stronger. Asked Rhea as the gears in her brain start moving not only had they invaded in her territory, but they are killing humans and even try to kill her, and Sona's pawn such an act could cause a war. Rainer nods her head yes, they believe with twilight healing they can kill both devil and angels, and the one who organized this is Kakabiel he left me in charge, but since I betrayed him, Kalwerner is in charge, says Rainer. Both Rias and Akeno stare in shock at hearing the one who organized these fallen angels was Kakabiel one of the strongest of them. But why start all this trouble now? Asked Rias. Rainer eyes narrowed war, Kakabiel was never satisfied with how it ended, he always believed we should have won, I will offer my help in dealing with these fallen angels and exorcist, I just have one request, says Rainer. Hearing that Rainer has a request causes both young females to look each other in curiosity, and what might this request be? Asked a cautious Rias. The spare middle she's just a kid she only agreed to this plan because she thought this will gain her access back to heaven if I must I'll even become one your pieces, says Rainer with a bow shocking the two never expecting a fallen angel to now to Rias. You would really become a devil just to save Middled? Ask a shock Rias. Yes, she's been like a little sister to me, I'll do anything to protect just please spare her. Asked Rainer. Very well, Rainer, says Rias, but inside she was smiling she definitely wasn't expecting this to happen, but she sure wasn't about to deny the chance of getting another piece. But speaking of Asia where is she? Asked a curious Rias. Rainer smiles at this Naruto is treating her to Raymond, and you know something she never heard of even had Raymond, says Rainer. Hearing this caused Akeno to giggle well well isn't that amusing she seems to live a very sheltered life, giggled Akeno she did think it was cute that someone never heard of Raymond, since it wasn't extravagant or rare like some food. Rias turns to her best friend can you do me a favor and pick them up the last thing we need is an exorcist attacking either one, says Rias, plus she was worried about her new devil, since he is a newly made devil, the fallen angels will try to kill him when he's still a fresh devil. Yes, or course but you, said Akeno she then teleports away to his location, which was where he goes to help the homeless you would expect to see Naruto and Asia taking care of the homeless, but know what she saw a bloodbath with various of people dead in the cold ground, some had bullet holes, while others had their limbs cut off she looks around searching for the two she found them. She saw Asia standing behind Naruto who is protecting her from an exorcist, Naruto pants heavily he glares at the exorcist, pouring his snake scale arm at the man Naruto grits his teeth as blood drops from his mouth. It seemed when he was fighting the rogue exercise had been shot a few times just before the exorcist can shot another light bullet, a magic circle appears around the two protecting them from the bullets, both stare in shock, even the exorcist looked shocked the man look on in anger what? A magic barrier. Snarled the man. Who dares interfere with the work of the lord? Growled the man in anger. Tsubaki flies down glares at the man you are in violation exorcist this territory belongs to the Gremory and Sitter family, said Tsubaki in a cold turn she glances at the injured Naruto, before focusing on the man. The man aims his gun at her fucking die devil trash. Snarled the man. Pufu, that's no way to speak to a lady, says Akeno flying down she to looks at Naruto with concern before turning her focus on the man lightning, then dances around her fingers, while Tsubaki's Najinata is covered fire before the man can even pull the trigger he's turned to ash, as lightning and fire burns him, the queens of Rias and Sona turns to see Naruto passed out seeing the two no longer in. Danger she drops the barrier they then watch in amazement as a crying Asia heals his wounds. Rainer wasn't lying when she said Asia can heal, thought Akeno as she watches the wounds quickly closed you as if he was never hurt. Asia cries over the knocked Uzumaki please, Naruto be okay. Cried the young girl. Both Akeno and Tsubaki kneel down to her Asia holds him close to her W who are you? Asked a scared Asia. Both women smile at the her in a friendly manner they couldn't really blame her she did just witness a massacre it's okay, the both of you are safe we're friends of Rainer, says Akeno Asia, then looks on in shock we can take the both of you somewhere safe, would you like that? Asked Akeno. Asia nods her head hugging Naruto even deeper as if he's some security blanket, Akeno smiles at this, she then turns to Tsubaki thank you, for your help, says the smiling shrine maiden. The vice president returns the smile it's no problem I'm glad to help Akeno, says Tsubaki the black hair then turns to the knocked out Naruto she honestly surprised at how well he was able to fend himself, it seemed like he has some skill in using his sacred gear unlike Issei, who has yet to learn to use his boost gear. She then senses a spirit coming from Naruto not just any spirit, but legendary Gorgon sister Medusa so, he's an ancestor of Medusa Rhea's sure lucked out, and he's cute too, thought Tsubaki. If that is all I'll be taking my leave, I'm sure Sona-sama would like to hear what happened, says Tsubaki Akeno nods her head then watches as Tsubaki teleports away. 
Akenoshi turns to the others and notices that Asia had fell asleep, she then teleports herself and others back to the occult research club. The next day Naruto groans as he tries to rise from his bed, but notices he's unable to move either of his arm, what the? Why can't I move my arms? How did I get back in my room? At Naruto he then blushes a deep red as he feels something soft pressed against both arms, it didn't take a genius to guess was a pair of breast, he then blushes harder, as he feels the mysterious woman snuggle against him enveloping his arm between her large breast, his face then matches his hair. Suddenly the woman who's snuggling his right arm, pops her head from the covers, revealing herself to be none other than his King Ria's Grimory, who happens to be smiling at him, wh what are you doing here? Stuttered a nervous Naruto. You hurt Naruto-san so I took you back here to heal you, Asia had healed you before you blacked out, but I wanted to make sure you were properly healed, says Ria's enjoying how tongue-tied her fellow redeed, is she also thought he was pretty cute blushing like this. A and you're naked because. Stuttered the tattooed teen. She smiles at him with a hint of mischievous simple I prefer to sleep in nude, says Ria's causing Naruto to have a sweat drop on his head, the only thing that ran through his head was that this beautiful woman would be the death of him, she then gains a sly smile besides, you're the only one who I would allow to be naked, as you my cute pawn. These Ria's causing him to be blushing and stuttering mess. Ara, how bold of you but you I wonder what the other knights say. Wonder to Keno rising from the covers giving Naruto a seductive smile. Aya Keno W what are you doing here? Asked Naruto Ria's pouts at Akeno. I just wanted to get to know our new cute pawn, seeing how protective you were over that nun made me envious, says Akeno running her finger across his birthmark this action had caused him to purr. Akeno then smiles at this how lucky are we to have a little cat and fox, I can't wait to tease you Naru-kun, said Akeno blowing on his ear, not be able to handle two beautiful naked women he passes out. Ria's pouts at her oh, don't pout but you. Perhaps you are jealous he is quite handsome, smiled Akeno Ria's glares at her and jealously we are devils are we not? Teased Akeno as she rubs his cheek she then snuggles against him, causing Ria's to be annoyed at her friend she too snuggles against him. Ria's then smiles to him he sure is warm I really hope you can help me Naruto-kun, but I think I can get used to this, thought Ria's closing her eyes and dreaming a world where she longer having to worry about a certain sexist bird. As the three woke up again, Naruto blushes as both girls rises from the bed, giving him a view of their large breast. When did my life start becoming an Ichi and I'm? Thought Naruto he quickly turned away not wanting to seem like he was some type of pervert. Akeno smiles at him she helps Ria's out on her bra you know I doubt mind you looking Naru-kun, teased Akeno if he was any other boy like a certain essay he would most likely do from a blood lost, but he wasn't, but this also makes teasing him much more fun for the beautiful shrine maiden. It would be improper to look at you too, says a blushing Naruto who's facing the wall, well neither Ria's and Akeno didn't seem to mind he just couldn't look his mom did teach well, and he wasn't a pervert like Issei, plus thinking of Issei had also made remember his scumbag of a dead godfather he truly did hate perverts. Goku, quite the gentleman that's rare, smiles a blushing Akeno placing her hand on her cheek, this action caused her breast to bounce in place. Akeno had to be honest she was surprised at how much willpower he had not to look at her and Ria's any other boy would give their left arm just to peek at their nude body, but here Naruto a boy at their school is trying his best not to peek at the two beautiful women. I think I understand why Rainer and Kaneko fell for him, thought Akeno who was used to the boys treating her and Ria's like their celebrities, but there are times where she gets tired, everyone treating her like some rare species to be viewed far away, but Naruto is just treating her like a normal girl. Ria's rolled her eyes at her friend, besides being loving to tease others she's also one of the biggest sadist. Ria's sighs at her queen stop teasing him Akeno, says Ria's, even though she does find his flush face quite cute. Ara ara, fine but you I'll stop for now that is. Giggled Akeno Ria's in response rolled her eyes at Akeno, but she knew this was the best response she'll get from her, but just as she helped Ria's out on her bra, so did she glances at Naruto and sees his body fully turned around. Well, Akeno wasn't lying he is quite the gentleman, thought Ria she honestly didn't know if she would do if he was anything like the a certain immortal bird, but if he was anything like that bastard, she would have never than him, but fortunately he wasn't like most teens and having no control over his libido. Uh, what about Asia? Is she safe? Asked a concerned Naruto he would turn to them, but he can still hear the two dressing, so he kept facing away, he then gains a saddened look, remembering the dead body surrounding him, and a fearful look on Asia's face, as she saw the exorcist kill the innocent people without a care. Yeah, she's okay, but she's shaken up which is normal. I have her and Rainer staying at my apartment, says Ria's with both females fully dressed, they turn to the male Ridi Keno, then looks around his room and sees a picture of a young Naruto with his father, she then stares at the photo of his father and quickly notices he took after his father in the looks department while he had inherited his pair from his mother she noticed Ria's never mentioned about Naruto's father, which made her curious about his father. 
He smiles at this that's good to hear I was worried about her. She's a good person Yakno. Someone as nice and kind as her shouldn't be exposed to such awful things, she should be happy enjoying life and having friends I just can't live with himself, knowing there's someone as kind as her is suffering, because of some overgrown crow wants her power, and I won't allow them to hurt someone who needs. Help Dadabeo. Says Naruto with a tone with conviction he may have just met Asia, but he's still considered her precious. Both Ria's and Akendo blush at the conviction and confidence in his voice, it wasn't just him talking out of his ass, but he actually meant it. To the young girls his declaration reminded them of one of those shown in an I'm hero as well, you'll get your luck because after school we'll be training and don't worry about Asia she's in the care of Rainer, says a smiling Ria's Naruto, lets out a breath of relief he didn't know he was holding. Ara Ara, a gentleman and a knight quite outstanding man, don't you say but you. Says a smiling Akeno shooting Naruto a flirtatious look causing him to blush nervously, she then walks to him pressing her breast against his own, she then blushes at Naruto as your senior, it is my job to show you the ropes I promise not to hurt you too bad if you do get hurt I promise to treat. You properly, says Akeno with a heavy blush Naruto just stares at her confused not quite not quite sure why she is blushing so hard it almost seemed like she wanted to see him hurt, but that's crazy. Some time later, Ria's and her peerage were in the woods, each of them wearing workout clothes today. We'll be focusing on the basics such as flying, says Ria's, her wings come out each of them do the face she floats off the ground Naruto tries to do the same, but finds himself struggling not used to flying well, it's a start, comments Ria's. You can do it Naru-kun. Exclaimed Rainer. I I I believe in you and Naruto-kun. Screamed a blushing Asia. Kaneko released a low hiss why are you here, asked Kaneko glaring at Rainer. Rainer smirks at Kaneko what's wrong jealous. I'm just here to cheer on Naru-kun. Grins Rainer. DSK, whatever others. Growled Kaneko in a low tone. Her cap. He smiles at this that's good to hear I was worried about her. She's a good person Yakno. Someone as nice and kind as her shouldn't be exposed to such awful things, she should be happy enjoying life and having friends I just can't live with himself, knowing there's someone as kind as her is suffering, because of some overgrown crow wants her power, and I won't allow them to hurt someone who needs. Help Dadabeo. Says Naruto with a tone with conviction he may have just met Asia, but he still considered her precious. Both Ria's and Akeno blush at the conviction and confidence in his voice, it wasn't just him talking out of his ass, but he actually meant it. To the young girls his declaration reminded them of one of those shown in an I'm hero as well, you'll get your luck because after school we'll be training and don't worry about Asia she's in the care of Rainer, says a smiling Ria's Naruto, lets out a breath of relief he didn't know he was holding. Ara Ara, a gentleman and a knight quite outstanding man, don't you say but you. Says a smiling Akeno shooting Naruto a flirtatious look causing him to blush nervously, she then walks to him pressing her breast against his own, she then blushes at Naruto as your senior, it is my job to show you the ropes I promise not to hurt you too bad if you do get hurt I promise to treat. You properly, says Akeno with a heavy blush Naruto just stares at her confused not quite not quite sure why she is blushing so hard it almost seemed like she wanted to see him hurt, but that's crazy. Some time later, Ria's and her peerage were in the woods, each of them wearing workout clothes today. We'll be focusing on the basics such as flying, says Ria's, her wings come out each of them do the face she floats off the ground Naruto tries to do the same, but finds himself struggling not used to flying well, it's a start, comments Ria's. You can do it Naru-kun. Exclaimed Rainer. I I I believe in you and Naruto-kun. Screamed a blushing Asia. Kaneko released a low hiss why are you here, asked Kaneko glaring at Rainer. Rainer smirks at Kaneko what's wrong jealous. I'm just here to cheer on Naru-kun. Grins Rainer. DSK, whatever others. Growled Kaneko in a low. Her cap end. The giant tick mark appeared on her head, she then gains a victorious grin on her beautiful face, she then begins to snicker at the petite first year devil Kukuku, is whittle Nico jealous all she has is those washboard. These drain her as she puffed out her chest making her abnormally large breast to bounce in place Kaneko glares at the raven-haired beauty, to add injury to salt, she even playfully massages her breast. Kiba turns his head from the sight no doubt not used to seeing someone act in such a manner, Asia covers her eyes from the scene, and blushing up a storm, and of course, Naruto turned his head to stare at the scene, and quickly turns his head to the side, his face was a good shade of red. Both Ria's and Akeno simply giggle or smile at this scene ara ara, seems like those two are getting along just fine. Said Akeno. Ria's laughs at this yeah, that's a way at looking at it. Said Ria she then turns to Naruto and sees he has a better hold on his flying which causes her smile, she then begins to think about Sona, and wondering how she's doing and how she's handling her own new devil, she also felt envious for her friend, well she was able to get out of her forced marriage, by challenging him to a chess game and outsmarting him unfortunately she doesn't share the same level of intelligence as the sitter heiress, she should really talk to Sona about her own engagement. 
Maybe Sona could give her some insight or some help she trusted her peerage with all her heart, but she was unsure if they could defeat Riser. Even with the newly added Raynor and Naruto she hoped by the time the deadline her peerage will be ready for the bastard. But she knew she can't just sit around hoping for Riser to drop the engagement of her family, wasn't forcing her into this, but the only way to stop this is if she does it herself. Rhea smiles at Naruto glad that he's beginning to get the hang of flying Naruto you can come down now, says Rhea smiling at her fellow Reteed. She also knew she Naruto wasn't like the rest of the perverted boys at school, so she had tread around him differently. Naruto nods his head and flies down to the ground, Akeno smiles warmly at Naruto, which would cause his both male and female population to have sexual meltdown ara ara, congratulations Naruto-kun, you have the hang of flying I see, states Akeno smiling at the blonde fluttering her eyes at him, making him blush she giggles at this. Akeno turns to her master with a blushing smile on her face, Ria's knew this smile, it was the same smile she used when she was about to inflict pain on the poor soul what it is it? Asked Ria's with an amused look. The Maiko beauty giggles into her hand I was just wondering. What if you teach Rainer her devil duties and I can teach Naruto-kun about magic? Asked Akeno with a smile for some reason both Kaneko and Rainer glare at Akeno, and for some reason Naruto suddenly felt like he was one of those Ichi and I'm, but that couldn't be right, he's hardly known Kaneko and Rainer, and he just met the other girls, there was no way they were gonna fight over for his attention, that just happened in those and I'm, the perverted trio like. Rias hums to herself in thought Yakno there's not just a bad idea. Said Rias she had to, admit having two fallen angels on her peerage, is going to be an advantage, especially with the fact she knows why the fallen angels are here in Kuo. Rainer stares at Akeno with a death glare Akeno just giggles at the jealous female come on Rainer I'll explain to you about your devil duties and the abilities you gain from your rook piece. Said Rias behind her is grumbling Rainer muttering about cheaters. So what kind of magic will I be learning? Asked a curious Naruto the Yuzumaki begins to wonder if he could produce powerful wind or maybe create mountains, or maybe he could do that cool fire move Hai does in that old anime. The Kendo giggles at his excitement well I use lightning magic, it's a form of offense and defense. Being able to invoke lightning by either charging electricity from the hands and attack from a long distance, or conjuring thunder clouds above a target where the lightning will strike. The lightning attacks work by electrocuting the opponents to various degrees, from completely paralyzing enemies to utter disintegration, due to the extremely high voltage of the electricity employed in their use. The lightning strike is strong enough to obliterate a whole building. Said Akeno hearing this shock the blonde he also didn't quit like the smile on Akeno's face, as the lightning dance around her fingertips. Demonic power requires the power of using your imagination and the power to create, as well as having a good sense, explained Akeno Naruto nods his head in understanding she then pressed her hand against her cheek kukuku, if you want I can help you with lightning magic, says Akeno with her cheeks turning a bright pink. Naruto nervously shook his head negatively his head she giggles at his nervousness nah, I'll be fine you don't have to do that, stuttered Naruto not used to this type to this type of attention. Asia squeals loudly as she watches Akeno pets Naruto on his cheek, she then covers her face with her hands as a purr came out from the Redeed's mouth she had to admit she didn't think such a handsome man could suddenly switch to handsome male to cute fox. Akeno giggles at this ara ara, did I find a weakness? Teased Akeno licking her lips in seductive manner. The cold chill runs down his back, he then cautiously looks at her with a disbelieving look um, Akeno-san are you um, are you a sadistic? Asked a nervous Naruto as he slowly steps away from her and stares into her beautiful purple eyes. The Keno beams at him brightly why yes I am, Fufufu -fu -fu, does it bother you? Asked the woman in a teasing manner. And no, as long as you don't try to push it on me I'm fine. Ugh, at least your sadistic interest is way better than Rhea's sleeping nude habits. I swear I thought I was going to have a heart attack, said Naruto in a low tone it especially wouldn't do good if his mom caught him in that situation, he knew just how scary his mom can be. A faint blush appeared on her cheeks, not the blush she would get from punishing the poor soul, but an actual blush, the fact the boy prefer her sadistic side over seeing a nude Rias, had definitely affected her, the Maiko priestess was sure her heart even skipped a few beats oh yeah, how's Tsubaki, I haven't seen her in a while since that night. Asked a concerned Naruto he was actually worried about the other raven-haired woman. The Kendo quickly shoot off the butterflies she was feeling in her stomach and smiles at him, Tsubaki is doing good she's just busy with her duties as a devil and vice president of the school said Akeno. She watches as Naruto blinks in confusing then he rubs the back of his head and muttering to himself for being an idiot ugh, of course there's other devils here besides Rias and her peerage. Muttered Naruto in a low tone the others snickered at the blonde. Ready to start your magic training? Asked Akeno. Naruto nods his head in agreement has them closed his mind he focuses on the demonic power dwelling inside of him, which took a while since this is his first time. 
but after a few moments he feels a power inside himself the power to create and my own imagination. Thought the male he could try to imagine him doing magic from an Animer movie. But using demonic magic requires him to be original. So he has to be original and creative. His body is then covered demonic energy Asia. Along with the other devils stare in awe as five Naruto appear. D there's five Naruto coons. Exclaimed Asia in shock never seeing such thing. Duplicate magic, said Kiba with interest Kaneko, then begins to poke each duplicate, realizing that the clones aren't an illusion, but solid clones. Duplicate magic. Repeated Naruto. Kiba nods his head and smiles in a friendly manner, no doubt happy to help the newly recruited devil yes, duplication magic allows the user to create duplicates of themselves and others to confuse enemies and attack in numbers in order to overwhelm the enemy through sheer numerical advantage. The concept is pretty simple, but it can be quite the powerful magic if used right said Kiba. Asia then runs over to Naruto and smiles brightly at the Yuzumaki that's amazing Naruto-kun. I've never seen anything like it before. Exclaimed Asia with a 100 watt smile Naruto blushes at the praise. Kaneko gives him a thumbs up that's pretty cool Naruto-kun, says Kaneko. Naruto runs the back of his head nervously I don't think it's that amazing, said a bashful Naruto. Oh, but it is amazing Naruto-kun especially for a newly turned devil, usually it takes time for a reincarnated devil to develop their own magic so you should feel proud for yourself. Encouraged Akeno Naruto smiles at her and nods his head. Each of his clones then vanished away Akeno, then gains a devilish idea, she leans towards Naruto and places a kiss on his cheek, causing Naruto to sputter in shock and surprise W what was that for? Asked the stuttering Naruto Kaneko looks at the scene with a pout muttering something about cow tits. Akeno simply runs her hand over his whiskered face and batter eyelashes at him, she laughs inwardly at the blushing mess of Naruto, while he may not be a pervert like the rest of the populace at Kuo Academy, but teasing him sure is fun. She shrugged her shoulders in a nonchalant manner, it's just congratulations for your hard working if you keep this up, I'll give another award. Said Akeno in a low tone with a sultry tone blowing her warm breath on his neck, causing the reed to shiver, she then nibbled on his earlobe, she steps away with a charming smile, feeling a sense of overload the blonde faints with his face an atomic red blush. The last thing he remembered was Akeno kissing cheek and promising to give him another reward, the mere concept getting another kiss or something a little more mature had sent out favorite whiskered into the world of unconsciousness. Naruto was sure the ground didn't feel this warm or soft, but as soon as those thoughts went through his head, his eyes shot open and to his shock the first thing he saw in his view was large breasts, not just any breasts but they belonged to Rainer, who was just keeping herself busy by running her hand through his hair. Ah Rainer? What's going on? Where am I? Asked Naruto with rapid speed he then gains a strange feeling as if he is being watched he turned his head and sees a Keno with a lump in the head and staring at him with her usual look. You fainted because of Himajima says Rainer pointing at her fellow busty devil and Akeno being the ultimate sadistic with no shame, she didn't look affected by the punishment she received from Ria's, if anything she looked like she enjoyed the punishment she received. Rainer just shook her head at Akeno damn that sadistic bitch, muttered Rainer glaring at Akeno who just smiles back. She then glances down at Naruto and then smiles warmly at him and pats his cheek and infertility rubs his cheeks, and just like before he lets out a purr his face is suddenly buried into her breasts Rainer, lets out a loud squeal cute, exclaimed Rainer nuzzling his head into her breasts. Kaneko looks on at the scene with pink cheeks Naruto senpai has a cute side. Says Kaneko she then chomps onto a cookie. Asia looks at the two with her cheeks red you're like those cute foxes, said Asia she decides to distract herself by drinking down the tea. Rias smiles at the scene a smirk is then placed on her face having fun there Naruto-kun. Teased Rias. Naruto quickly pulls away it isn't like that. Yelled Naruto with his face now matching his hair she had admit he did like cute when he's all flustered and embarrassed. The Keno told me you've done duplicate magic. Asked Rias with a smile she had to admit teasing him was pretty fun. Naruto nods his head he decides to show off by concentrating his demonic energy and five other clones appeared and one of them decides to prove just how durable it is when takes a bite out of the cookies that were set out. Rias smiles at this that's impressive this could give you an advantage over your enemy. Said Ria's this causes him to smile back at her she can definitely knew with Naruto on her side, the chances of beating Riser was slightly to her side. The next day, Naruto had just finished his breakfast he hears a knock at the door and wonders if it is Kaneko or Rainer, plus he knew it would be better if he answered the door and not his overprotective mother, will she hadn't went full bear mom on Kaneko, he rather she not go all mama bear on Ria's or Akeno. As he opened the door he was expecting to see someone from peerage not the vice president of the student council, the blonde blinks at the woman with a look of confusion Tsubaki-san. Is something wrong or did Sona send you here? Asked Naruto he said the last part in a low tone. Tsubaki smiles warmly at the Yuzumaki teen, it's good to see you are well informed Naruto-kun. 
And no, Sonasama didn't send me here I came on my own accord how are you doing? How are you handling your duties? Asked a concerned Sabaki. Yeah, I'm doing good better than being a kebab. Said Naruto the blonde with a soft chuckle his chuckle then stopped once he realized Tsubaki face has a red hue he leans into personal space, causing the blush he then placed his hand on her forehead you don't seem to have a fever. Said Naruto he steps back realizing he probably way to close. Tsubaki smiles bashful I'm alright thank you, said Tsubaki with a small smile. Naruto shouldn't you be heading who are you? Questioned Kashina looking at Tsubaki with suspicion. Tsubaki bows in respect to the mother of Naruto good morning Miss Uzumaki, my name Tsubaki Shinra, I'm the vice president of the student council. I was talking to Naruto about seeing if he wants to join the student council. Said Tsubaki which was a total lie she had to admit his mother was quite beautiful, she even had the same long crimson hair like Ria's she definitely tell where exactly did he get his looks from. Ashina was taken by surprise at the politeness Tsubaki had the other black haired girl didn't seem to be as polite as this one. Kashina sighs at how all the females seem to flock towards her son, especially the big-breasted females. Well you better be off, don't want to be late. Said Kashina Tsubaki smiles at this boza Kashina, the Yuzumaki mother does the same thing she then closes the door. Naruto sighs in relief happy his mother didn't go overboard, he hoped his mother would start to mellow down, was once she gets uses to all the other females. As the two get on his bike Naruto glances over his shoulder with an apologetic look sorry about invading your personal space back there. Says Naruto. The male Yuzumaki jumps as he feels her breasts pressing against his back I don't mind. Says Tsubaki with pink cheeks the only thing the redeed was trying to figure out when did his life become one of those dating sim games. Are there any other devil families here besides Ria's and Sona? Asked Naruto. No, Kuo is under the protection of Gremory and Sitter protection, if another devil house or one of the other factions come to Kuo, they just tell Ria's or Sona their reasoning. Explained Tsubaki even with a shaky alliance these things are required if not then it is possible another war can break out. Ugh, sounds like a lot of politics. I take it there are some who prefer war. Asked Naruto he had no idea that the amount of things that both Ria's and Sona do. Yes, even though all three factions has suffered greatly there are still those who wish for war. Said Tsubaki even though the angel faction doesn't want to start war, they still wouldn't hesitate to engage in war. Naruto lets out a groan causing Tsubaki to raise an eyebrow to mug. War one hate war. There's no winners in war everyone loses, both sides suffer the only one who does win is war itself. Humans, angels, fallen angels and devils there's no real difference we all have dreams, fears, ambitions, and goals here we fight over the smallest things. Look at humans for example, ever since the evolution of man they have been killing each other, and even now humans are so destructive they have engineered their own doomsday, with the creation of the nuclear bomb and hydrogen bomb. As long as we continue to fight among each other death will soon follow. Says Naruto he never did like war, since all wars are always caused by some pity thing. Tsubaki stares at his back with amazement, then last time she heard everyone speak so passionate about finding peace and change, is when Sona told her about her dream to create a raiding game school for all devils. She then leans her head against his back, enjoying the warmth that came from his body, while the ride to school was peaceful and quiet, Naruto's face was still as red as a tomato. Even though he's devil his school life was still pretty much the same he went to each class, even the perverted trio were the same even though, but he usually ignored the three idiots. The only thing that seemed different was lunch usually he would eat alone in class and listen to the pillows, but those plans seemed to change when Ria's, Sona, Akeno, and Tsubaki came into his class, shocking everyone including himself, he takes his headphones out what are you guys doing here? Asked Naruto while everyone else were muttering among themselves among themselves. I don't believe it it's the four beauties of Kuo exclaimed a male. The Keno-sama is so beautiful. Exclaimed a female. Sona fixed her glasses we thought it would be good idea to have lunch together, and from what I heard you are always alone. State Sona the raven-haired beauty takes a seat and scoots it towards Naruto's desk, each of the girls soon followed suit, with Sona and Ria sitting next to Naruto, while Akeno and Tsubaki are seated across from him, everyone couldn't help but gawk at the five students. I wish I was Naruto-sama. Cried a male. He's so awesome. Exclaimed a female. Naruto sighs mentally full well knowing not only was peaceful lunch came to an end, but there's gonna be annoying rumors, then again there were rumors already that he supposedly he had a thing for Kaneko and Akeno. But Naruto usually ignored these gossips headphones do help in that market, the blonde takes out his lunch, which happened to be some homemade pork ramen each of the girls stare at him, is that homemade ramen? Asked Akeno. Naruto takes a bite out of the noodle he then shrugged his shoulders my mom made it for me, I prefer real ramen tastes better. Said Naruto. Ria's takes out her bento box and grabs a piece of sausage octopus Naruto raised an eyebrow at her, she just smiles at him come on, give it a try. 
asked Riaz with a pleading look as he raised the food to his lips, the Yuzumaki then opens his mouth, and with a bright smile, she feeds her fellow Riteed, causing a loud screams and cheers. Tsona looks on with her eyes narrowed she then grabs a piece of steak meat and waves the food out to Naruto, who takes a bite out of the meat, how was it? Asked Sona she turned towards Riaz and pouts at her childhood friend Sona in response, just have her a peace sign the two females turned away from each other, both heirs of their respected clan stares at the red-haired Yuzumaki. Naruto's eyes turned into stars as he tasted the delicious meat which he can tell was seasoned well, which was good he didn't like his food to have too much or too little seasoned. It was good thank you Sona-san. I never knew you were good in the kitchen, said Naruto with bright smile Sona's cheeks turned pink at the compliment. Ria's cheeks puffed out in jealousy how was mine? Asked Ria's not wanting Sona to get one over her while they were childhood friends, they were also rivals in many aspects. It was good too I had no idea you guys would be so good at cooking. Said Naruto after finding out the two belonged to not one but two powerful devil clans he thought the two had maids at their respected homes. Well of course we have be as both heirs to the Gremory and Sitter clan, it is expected of us to be able to be responsible of our own peerage, but also to be responsible for our own well-being. To be responsible of others first you must be able to take of oneself. Said Sona plus at least own her own she doesn't have to deal with her sister. Naruto glances at both females in amazement, he never knew just how much responsibility the two held held, he wondered how much the two went through, he knows neither actually talked about their own families, he suspected the reason was personal manner. Suddenly he felt personal space was invaded by Akeno and Tsubaki, who each held out a piece of food Akeno was holding out a piece of fried pork chop, and Tsubaki held out a piece of salmon the blonde takes a bite out of both. And hums at the delicious texture that was so good I think those were as good as the found my mother makes. Says the blonde Akeno shoots Ria's a grin, as if telling her king, she owned Tsubaki simply smiles at her own king, at which she received a glare, but had zero malice. I also wanted to talk to you about something, said Riaz, this causes Naruto th look at her with a curious look in his eyes, he noticed a serious look in her eyes, and realized it must be devil business, it's about the bird infestation. Said Riaz this caught his attention his eyes suddenly flashed between his normal blue to green, then they stayed on his blue orbs. Sona takes two from her tea both Riaz and I have talked, and we believed in three days would be the right time to handle the bird infestation. Said Sona they then turned to Akeno who chuckling to herself no doubt the sadistic was daydreaming torturing the fallen angels, the people who have known her for years, just rolled their eyes at Akeno. In the remaining three days we will be teaching you about snakes. Said Ria's Naruto nods his understanding she means his sacred gear, this would give him time to train his devil powers and his sacred gear. But what about Asia? Asked Naruto he knew the fallen angels had mostly realized by now that Raynor has obviously betrayed them and taken their main target, which means they'll be searching for the two he wasn't too worried for Raynor, he knew she could take care of herself unfortunately the name can't be Sa said about Asia. Sona grabs hold of Naruto's in a soothing manner she smiles at him don't worry Naruto-san, we have already thought off that there's a safe house that that we can keep Asia and possibility Raynor. This safe house would be protected by myself and some of my peerage. Said Sona Naruto then nods head he knew they could be trusted, plus it wasn't like the fallen angels hadn't figured out Gremory and Sitter are working together in this effort, in most situations, Sona would allow her best friend handle things on her own, but Sona believed it would better for them if they decided to work together. Hi, I trust you Asia is just so naive she would probably trust some random stranger thinking he's some kind man. Muttered the redeed they couldn't fault him for thinking that Asia is a very naive girl who isn't aware of how the real world works just get so the idea of her trusting a complete stranger, isn't that too far-fetched? The Keno snickers at this while Ria sighs knowing Naruto wasn't kidding about Asia, I really wish that was a joke. Mumbled Ria's in a low tone even Sona found this amusing well, I suppose it's good thing she hadn't run into some like like that is a boy. Said Ria's while she had no problem with the boy, his perverted acts along with what Sona told her of the perverted boy, reminded her too much of Riser, she honestly happy that he wasn't a member of her peerage, she honestly couldn't see him getting along with either Naruto, Kaneko, and Kiba. But that was due to Naruto, and Kaneko's hatred for pervert she knew Kiba wouldn't have a problem with the brunette say, would just be jealous of how popular the blonde is. Suddenly sense of coldness was coming off of Naruto each of the females turned and noticed his hair is covering his eyes, if that bastard even tried anything with Asia, I'm going to break every bone in that pervert's body until his bones are nothing but dust. Said Naruto. Rr, can I watch? Asked the blushing Akeno with her cheeks a bright red. Ria simply sighed at her best friend, she wasn't sure which outcome for Issei seemed worse, Naruto literally breaking every bone in Issei's body or the sadistic Akeno torturing him her famed lightning magic. But then an idea came to her mind Naruto and Akeno both torturing Issei she just hoped for Issei's sake, he doesn't piss Naruto off. 
Tsunda coughed in her hand drawing the attention of from Uzumaki and the sadistic that won't be necessary, he does step out of line, I'll be the one to punish him thank you for the offer Akeno, but I don't need him reduced to a vegetable. State Sona she did punished him when she caught him peeping at Tsubaki's breasts when she told him about his devil duties. Akeno pouts at this remark her pupils then shift into stars can I watch? Ask Akeno with a hopeful tone. Tsona stares at Akeno with a blank look on her face no, said Sona in a flat tone Akeno pouts at this and mumbling about unfairness. She then turns towards the male Yuzumaki, who was helping himself to the delicious ramen, after we deal with the bird infestation, both myself and Riaz has agreed, after we deal with them Rainer, Middled, and Asia will be joining Kuo Academy. State Sona even though neither of the females belong to the devil faction, they each deserved a proper education. Is Rainer going to go by her name or Yama? Asked Naruto the bell for the end of the lunch, then rang. The four beautiful devils rise from their seats on a face Naruto a smile thank you for lunch, spending lunch with us Naruto-kun. I would love to discuss more with you unfortunately I am needed somewhere else. Says the blushing Sona as Naruto smiles back at her. Riaz gains a Cheshire grin she looks amused as she stares at her rival, were you asking Naruto on a date? That does like a date doesn't, Akeno. Asked Riaz with a sly look on her face. Akeno giggles into her hand Cuckoo, who would have guessed the serious and pristine Sona would ask Kuo's lone wolf. I never knew you had it in you I wonder what will Seraph all have to say. Joke the teasing Himajima both busty teens watch as Sona's face went from light pink to a nuclear red steam was coming from her body, even her pupils changed from their normal looking to comically swirls. At the mention of going on a date with a tattooed teen had embarrassed and made her feel giddy, but with the mention of her sister had overloaded her with embarrassment. Even with her face as red as a nuclear bomb, she glares at her best friend, if you plan to tell my sister then I will inform your brother you have a boyfriend. Teased Sona seeing as Riaz was playing dirty, it seemed only right if she does too. Riaz's face soon matches her hair, she then thinks of several instances where her brother Serzich's could, and I will embarrass her, she glances at the confused Naruto, and quickly blushes. Her eyes then met Sona's to another else it was like two powerful creatures staring at each other, one waiting for the other to make the first move. As the two heiresses stare at each an unsaid rivalry between the two had started Riaz puffed her cheeks at Sona in a childish manner, she then grins at Sona, she then turned towards Tsubaki, who simply raised an eyebrow at the redeed she finally turned towards Naruto and smiles at him, she then leans towards his face and kissed him on the cheek, shocking him and everyone Sona feeling nervous glares at. Riaz and kissed him on his other cheek both soon left leaving Naruto's brain scramble. Chapter End Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.